It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And coming up, it'll be no holds barred between AFC North rivals. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals. All that and more coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League takes us to the banks of the Ohio River and Paycor Stadium in the Queen City of Cincinnati. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, a lot of people see these Bengals as legitimate contenders to get to the Super Bowl. And remember, they got there just two years ago. What do they need to do to get back? Well, we know how well positioned they are on offense, partner, because they have one of the best quarterbacks in the game and a lot of firepower to go with it. But how about what they did in the draft this year? A lot of capital expended on the defensive side of the ball, trying to slow down some of the other top contenders. Well, meanwhile, the visiting Steelers come into 2023 with something to prove. They finished above 500 at 9-8 and eight last year, but wound up on the outside looking in in terms of the playoff race. And you and I both know how it is around Pittsburgh. Death taxes and the Steelers finish 500 or above. But they want to get beyond that. They want to get back to those days when the Steelers were playing deep into the playoffs for the chance to go to the Super Bowl. And in fact, this team is continuing to get better. We are set to go. Evan McPherson to do the honors, and we are underway from Cincinnati. On the return from his end zone, Godwin Igwebuke. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. The Steelers' offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level, and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. Looking to throw right away, Pickett. They throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. From the 21, it's second and 10. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris, and only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. Here's Pickett. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that may get lost in the grand scheme of things, but one thing's for sure. You certainly don't want to go three and out to start the game. So that's a nice job of finding the right play call and coming up with a first down. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. Harris going to get it again on second down. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. Heavy set out there on third and one. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Holding offense. 
though. They accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Third and eight. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. So the completion good for six yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. So now the Bengals get ready for their first drive. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky, undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. Every quarterback in the NFL has a little bit of his own signature style out there, but for this guy, he really plays the game in a different way. It's led to a couple double takes from us up here as we see him as something truly unique. It's not that he's just the strongest passer or the best athlete to ever play the position. He just has a certain way of seeing the action and allows him to make some special plays out there. Now Browning. He'll drop this one down to Mixon. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. So from the 26-yard line, here's second and three. To throw Browning. That's caught by the tight end, Drew Sample. Seven yards there and a first down. Here's Browning. This goes out wide for Mixon. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers, working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. They'll look to throw again. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That was simply snap, rock, and fire. I mean, they didn't take long at all. Slant route, and I loved where he put it. He put on the body of the receiver low so that only he can catch it. Now, I don't think there was any magical formula there. Defensively, that's just tough to defend. Very much so. And that way, it allows the receiver to keep his body in front of the defender and not allow him to go through him to knock the ball away. Now a three-time 1,000-yard rusher, Joe Mixon. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 11 more on that one and another first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels, you know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. they will try to continue that trend here this afternoon. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Tackled on the play by Mark Robinson. 
We've called a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. On second down, here's Mixon. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Third and three. Off the play fake. Browning. Steeler defense locked in, forcing an upcoming fourth down. Man coverage is certainly a staple of their defense, and it's built for plays like that, forcing that incompletion. Zach Taylor, a new breed of head coach. He's going to go for it on fourth down. They run for it with Mixon. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. That was fourth and what we would call long in that situation, wasn't it? That wasn't fourth and inches, was it? No, I mean, you get in those situations, fourth and three, fourth and four, that's that's a lot to, what, what would you say, a lot of pizza left in that box. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> Not everyone dove in on that one. In today's NFL, this is a passing down. This is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. And now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. Mixon will take this one in. Touchdown, Cincinnati. So both sides of the football contributing here early. Their defense forces the punt, and then the offense takes it down the field and punches it in on the short touchdown run. And Brandon, that's good complimentary football, and that's what they're going to need if they want to get out of here victorious. Evan McPherson down for the PAT. He's got it to make it 7 0 Bengals. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. Touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. The last series form, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Pick it now on first down. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive, 13 yards, picking up the first. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. Back-to-back -back good plays. Have them on the move on first down. Pick it a look to throw it here. A short one there to Fryermuth. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. 
Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. And from the 42 now, here's second and two. Now run straight ahead with Warren. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs or putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 16. A very well executed play. It goes for 29 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Harris running straight ahead. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Pickett going to bootleg it. No, he doesn't have it. Maybe some alligator arms there going over the middle. Third down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. And that is incomplete. So Pickett is off to the sideline, and Chris Boswell is on for the Steeler field goal try. This will be spotted at the 20, so it's a 30-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. And he ran right through one tackle as he fights forward for a gain of seven. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? And the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Again, it's Mixon. And it'll be a minimum pickup here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. After 1-7-3 the score on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Cincinnati. It's the Bengals with the football here as they've got it with a third down coming up.
Looking to throw. Browning. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. There's your co-NFL record holder, T.J. Watt, doing what he does best, terrorizing quarterbacks. Seems to me that our friend, Old Momentum, <laughs> I think he's definitely changed teams in this game. It's only going to grow after that sack, and now, heck, they can get the ball back here and possibly even get the lead. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a fair catch call for and made just inside the 35-yard line. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs. At the 34. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. It helped force the incompletion. Now a second and ten. Pick it. His throw incomplete. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know there's probably another throw coming up third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. The Steelers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Now pick it. Got an open man, it's Pickens. And he's gonna be out up around the 45-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Back to throw, pick it. Here's a diving catch right side. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I know at retirement ceremonies, a rocking chair is often one of the major gifts, but don't give this guy one just yet. He may be plus 30, but my goodness, how about that effort? Yeah, he's not that old. Hey, I'm on the wrong side of 32. You, you, you okay? You feeling all right? <laughs> and he's going to go down here a sack. They push him back to the 34. Logan Wilson, the one who got in there and dropped him to the ground. But you could almost see his eyes light up defensively. I mean, as a linebacker, that's about as quick as you can get to a quarterback. So what did your third grade teacher teach you about straight lines, right? As soon as you have those, you take full advantage of them. He found a gap in the offensive line, got to the quarterback, and put him on the deck. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Looking to throw, pick it. He's got his target, that's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Pick it back to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. This close to the goal line, you got to be very careful with the offense called rub routes. When I call a pick trying to screen you off from your coverage, does a nice job of avoiding that and helping force an incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Pick it right back to the air again. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. A 
Again, he'll drop to throw. Throw left side, going to be taken in by Harris. And in for the Steelers, touchdown. Najee Harris, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Steelers have taken the lead. Well, we know he has decent hands out of the backfield. That's the first time, Charles, they've targeted him in the passing game, and it pays dividends. And I love the design, too, because they kept him in the backfield, made the defense think run first before they swung him out of there. And you're right, with his hands, they might want to throw it to him just a little bit more. Boswell good with the extra point, and the lead is now 10 to 7. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was finished off by a Najee Harris touchdown. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Operating from the gun, Browning. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 18 yards on that one, and the Bengals are moving. First down. Browning looking deep here for Chase and incomplete on the deep ball. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw again. And he sure arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. And Jamar Chase, the intended receiver. But now it's third down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Trying to get it to Chase, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Joey Porter Jr. And the Steelers will take over possession here up at the 44. Well, these defensive coaches, they sure like what they've got in this rookie corner. And with good reason, as you saw there. He only cost him a day two pick, and a lot of people thought he had first round ability. But when he was available on draft night, that was one where you didn't need the full time to make the selection. You call that pick in early, and he shows why he was so coveted with that interception there. So good field position for the Steelers as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. Picking now to throw off the play fake. That swung out wide to Harris. 
And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. A handoff for Warren. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. And this offense on third down today, they've been very good, five for seven thus far. Here it's third and two. to be able to convert and I guess every team would say that Charles but an opportunity miss there what they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point and they liked some matchups that they had thought they could exploit them unable to do so on that play now on fourth down on is the punt team sending this one away and this will be out of bounds at the what here the 12 yard line so now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field and we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Alex Highsmith making the nice play and getting the sack. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Mixing up the middle. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. So a tough situation to overcome here. Third and 17. Now Browning. That is caught. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's a much needed completion right there on third down. Really a sigh of relief, isn't it? They're backed up deep. You know they don't want to give the ball back to the other guys a great field position. They needed that throw, that completion, that first down. To throw Browning. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. From the gun again to Mixon. And not much to speak of. Call it a one yard gain up to the 26. Third and nine here. Here's Browning. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's gonna go down. Larry Ogunjobi in for the sack. But he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. These sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, They've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Here's Brad Robbins now. Now 
Now Austin. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And they will take over first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Pickett, he'll look to throw it. Pickens on the slant. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Brings up second and two at their 49 yard line. From just shy of midfield, here's second down and two. Pickett sets up play action. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. That goes for a gain of 31. I'm seeing a lot of hands on hips in that secondary, and I suspect a lot of mumbling under their breath as well because this defense has had no answer for the passing game here in the first half. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Off play action, pick it. This is caught. Touchdown! Kenny Pickett finding Pat Fryermuth. And the Steelers had six to their lead. well for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Bengals set to take over. They find themselves down 17 to seven as they start this drive first and 10. to start the drive. Browning. And a Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. So that now four first half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Inside handoff to Nixon. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On oh, now to punt, Brad Robbins. Here's Austin. 
Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. There's really no reason to change what they've been doing to this point. They've got the lead. They've looked good this first half. I agree with you totally, and a lot of coordinators, play callers feel exactly the same way. Until you stop what I'm doing, why should I make any changes? But there are a few that kind of outguess themselves or try to outguess the opponent, and they try to consider what they would do to take things away <laughs> and go to those plays right away. It'll be fun to watch when they get to the second half to see which way they go. Yeah, but to this point, it certainly hasn't been broke. We'll see if they try to fix anything. And he's got this down to the 35. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pickup here toward the end of the first half. To the air on first down with Pickett. Looking left sideline, incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Here's second and 10. Pick it now from the gun here. Man open is Robinson. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Pick it, he's gonna throw it again. That's complete to his tight end, Fryermuth. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring up second down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Boswell's kick is good, and that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to seven. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He had three catches in that opening part of the game and wound up with a touchdown reception as well. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Bengals with work to do in this third quarter, but they'll get the football first as we are back underway. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, They've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Back to throw. Browning. That's complete to the tight end sample. Seven yards there at a first down. Here's a give to Mixon. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 54 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it. And the running game is starting to pay off. The Browning's throw caught by Higgins. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. the play fake Browning and oh look at that a diving catch 22 yards there a first down hey did you have one of those backyards did you have one of those like mats or pits like you have for high jumpers and you know you had your friends throw the ball and you tried to make the spectacular catches I didn't need a mat <laughs> you, you just did it with the ground absolutely that explains your concrete toughness. that <laughs> explains your toughness right there because I think that guy was raised just like you what a catch On first and ten, Browning, another one into the hands of Jamar Chase. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Looking to throw. Browning pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Second down and goal. Browning. Touchdown, Bengals! Drew Sample. Two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals have got it back to within a score. 
Well, down in this part of the field, CD, they love to get him the football, and right there, a little pitch and catch for the score. Yeah, and he's such a weapon when it's that close to the end zone, and they love being able to rely on him to make those kind of catches. Talk about trust, talk about confidence, and he produces. McPherson on for the point after. And it's good. The deficit six, 20 to 14. A 10 play drive that time. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Iguabuque to return it from his end zone here. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. But Charles, they still have the lead despite their defense giving up a touchdown on the previous possession. And even though they have that lead, it feels like a back and forth ball game where to try to get momentum back, maybe they need at least three here on this drive. I think you're right about that, Brandon, because your game plan doesn't change. I do believe your urgency does because of the last score that went against your team. So what you want to do now is have your own drive and try and make sure that momentum stays in your camp. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. Pickett's throw complete to Fryermuth. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. They'll come up now, third and three. Pickett back to throw. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch signal four and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and the Bengals take over first and 10. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. Two yards to go, second down. Back to throw, Browning. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Well, the pressure, the hits, the sacks have been coming at him all game long. I'm frankly surprised that they haven't found a solution yet to create more time for him to throw it or maybe change what they do on offense. And yeah, that's one of the biggest differences in this game and why they're losing right now. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. 64 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Back to Mixon on first down. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. 
It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And he'll get it down here to the 43. We got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Mixon with a first down carry. Able to avoid him at the 40. And down to the 36-yard line here. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position, now more than ever, is a hybrid-type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. On third down, Mixon. First and goal. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Throwing on first down. Browning. Touchdown! Jamar Chase. 10 yards out, and the Bengals are an extra point away from taking the lead. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that went good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that will put them on top here in the third. to the touchdown McPherson on to kick this one away Iguabuque to return it from his end zone here and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 and now out come the Steelers they had that lead looked pretty comfortable in the first half maybe got a little bit overconfident because that's gone now almost takes us back to being kids, doesn't it? Because I know at some point your dad did the exact same thing mine did. Okay. It's okay to be confident, son, but overconfident, <laughs> that's not a good thing. And that's maybe what we saw here. They thought they had this thing in hand, had full control, and guess what? They've got to find a way to get back to where they were before. You think Papa Davis and Papa Gordon would get along? I think they'd get along just fine. And you know something? They'd still be giving us advice. Absolutely. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw into the hands of Pickens. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead.
Pick it. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 18 yards the gain for number 18. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down in bounds, toe tapping and drag. Zach Taylor's made the decision. He's going to go ahead and throw out the red challenge flag. The previous play is under review. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stays. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. First and ten, here's Pickett. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. Johnson, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Going to run the toss here to Harris. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. They tried to run it to the short side of the field. There just wasn't a whole lot of room to work with. Yeah, it seems like things just kept getting strung out towards the sideline, and he kept looking for a spot to dive up into the gap. There just wasn't one, so that turned into nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And no gain. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. I'm sure that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Jamar Chase hoping to be at center stage yet again as the offense returns to the field. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, make, you do. Makes you, get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time, it fell incomplete. A third quarter now to one-point game as they line up second and ten. Throwing again. Browning. Boyd's the target, and he has it over the middle. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Here's third and three. Looking to throw. Browning connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And he is going to have a Bengals first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it and were able to keep the drive moving. Now Browning. He completes it to Boyd. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. The 
couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here to throw Browning. And his throw is going to be incomplete. T. Higgins was the intended target. And now it's second down. to mix it and he's going to get this one down near the 45 yard line he'll get only three there so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead here's Browning a throw for Boyd, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Chandon Sullivan. Down to the 10, and he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. So this whole game gets flipped on its ear right there. The interception returned for a touchdown, and this lead changes hands here in the third quarter. And it certainly felt like this defense had a read on what was going on on the offensive side of the ball and said, let's cut down our coverage a little bit. Let's be in a position to make a play on the ball. And boy, that sure turned out well for them. The defense more than did its job. Now the offense is summoned onto the field as they'll go for two. They're going to run it with Harris. And he is not going to make it to the goal line. So the defense holds, and this remains a five-point game. I know they didn't tack on the two points, but I liked their attempt. After the interception return for a touchdown, I was thinking to myself, forget kicking it, go for two, and they did. Oh, yeah, and everybody's scrambling. Maybe you catch the defense on their heels. They weren't ready to be out there. Yeah, it's almost like a sudden change, right? There's a turnover. You take it away. They stuck it in the end zone. Keep the momentum going. Give credit to the defensive guys for rallying and stopping that two-point attempt. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Here's a quick throw to Higgins out wide. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 10 yards there at a Bengal first. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, Brandon, he's had a great day, but sometimes... The other guys make a play against you. What's that expression they like to use in the NFL? Those guys get paid, too, you know. Yeah, in college they say, hey, they're on scholarship, too, in the NFL. They're getting paid, too, with the day he's had. Oh, what a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in a game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes a quarterback look a whole lot better.
On first down, Browning. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are in December. Giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs. Right at the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's where they're going to ride. And he stopped immediately there. Logan Wilson that time there to bring him down. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was. Because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. On the give, it's Warren. A nice little juke. Shedding the tackle. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on it. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. The offense on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This will be third and five. Throws to his man on the out round. It's complete. That's Robinson. And they'll bring him down one yard shy after a pickup of four. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Here's a second and five now from the 25. An option hit off here to Mixon. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. 124 yards rushing now as he's done it on 22 carries. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Operating from the gun, Browning. Throw left side complete. That's Boyd. And able to get this with a catch the 45 before he's brought down. They'll get 14 on that one. Good for a bangle first down. But this offense hasn't been at their best here. They've made some mistakes. They've been frustrated. They've been largely shut down. But then you look up and say, wait a second. This is a one-score game. So they're still very much in this. And they're on the move here with a first down. Now a play fake here on first down. There's a quarterback who's learned his lesson. He's thrown a few interceptions so far. That time he said, I'm making sure nobody catches this one. Yeah. 
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. To throw again, Browning. I think the defenders have to feel pretty good that even though the ball was tipped in the air and could have become a big play for the offense, they actually won one because the guy flinging it today, he's having quite the performance. A couple of touchdown passes, almost threw his first interception, but he's throwing it so well that I think Lady Luck was on his side. Back to throw again. That is caught. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 33. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10, down at the 33. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. T.J. Watt picks up his second sack of the afternoon. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarter. Under pressure, and they got to him again. T.J. Watt dropping him for the second straight play. Might want to think about blocking him here on third down. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. To the sideline and incomplete. A fourth and very long coming up. You're out of field goal range. I don't know that you can go for this. Well, I know that you want to, right? You know that they want to say, hey, let's go for this. We've got the perfect play drawn up. Let's do it. But I wouldn't go for it either. I agree with you totally. You only down one score, punt it, let your defense pick you up. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted and spotted at the 14-yard line. The Steeler offense set to regain possession. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Pickett sets up play action. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. After the incompletion, here now third and two. Looking to throw, pick it. The Bengal pressure gets him that time, down he goes. In there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Impressive individual effort there. No one was going to stop him around the edge. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's why if you play in a 4-3 base and you're a defensive end, that's why you get the big bucks. They count on you to do everything. Defend the run and, of course, get to the quarterback. The Steelers send out their punter now. Standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Now a fair catch called for and made right on the 45-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. 
There's a look at receiver Jamar Chase as the Bengals get set to go on offense. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And the Steelers force the turnover. They'll take over at their own 27. Agreed, that's twice now in this fourth quarter. As a quarterback, a lot of times you think it's all on you to make plays when you're losing. And here, the play's not there, but he throws it anyway. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. They'll run it. Warren. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and some room to maneuver. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. 34 yards there and a first down. Every player I know tends to play the game in his mind before it actually happens. There's no way he thought that at this stage of the game, this would be his first big run like that. Yeah, but it's got to feel for him like the floodgates open a sigh of relief. Now we'll see if things can open up for him. See if it can continue. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll be taken down at the 34. It's Logan Wilson there to bring him down. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now Pickett will look to pass it. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. And the Bengals are right back in this football game. Their passing game has been spectacular this afternoon. Finally, a win for the defense. You think maybe there was an adjustment there. Finally gained a measure of, I don't even know if you call it revenge, but got a play done against him, and that's been difficult for them all game long. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. The interception sets them up with an opportunity to erase this fourth quarter deficit. Now this series could very well determine our outcome. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Here's Higgins out on the right side. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Back to throw. Browning. Quick slant caught by Chase. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Here's second and a yard. Operating from the gun, Browning. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. They'll look 
Duke to throw again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nice, well coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and 10 here. taken down what a huge play at this point in the game multiple rushers break through to drop him for the seventh time this game this offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush we've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Back-to-back -back big plays defensively. First the sack. Now they force the incompletion on third and long. Things looking pretty good for them. And this is where they have to be careful because they've got the momentum going their way. They will be really amped up to get to the quarterback. Look out. Draw, screen, something that can be used against them. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. No choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this Steeler defense able to come up with a stop. So now let's reset here, Charles. They do have two timeouts left, so they can stop the clock twice. This one's not quite over yet. No, and what you're doing on defense, you're going to use both timeouts, obviously. But you've got to call defenses are going to force the issue early, meaning you want that play over fast. You don't want to give them time to dance around in the backfield or run a wide sweep that'll take off time. Blitz them, put pressure on them, make sure that play ends quickly so that you can go ahead and keep moving. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. And the knee is taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. Pick it down to a knee, and that is going to do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. A fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall.